Welcome to All Gen Gamers, a podcast for people in video games of all generations. Starring Pete Dore, Happy Console Gamer, Gamester81, and Jason Heine. Guys, we are up to episode 23 of All Gen Gamers already. Can you believe that? I'm one of your co hosts, John Gamester81. We were here with Johnny Millennium. What's up, buddy? What it is, man. We got Jason, the EMU Review. Heine, what's up, Jason? What it do. And definitely last but not least, we got Pete Dore. What's up, Pete? Not too much. Pete, you sound kind of a little under the weather. What's going on, bro? Yeah, I, ever since that whale left, I don't know what it is. I got, I had a terrible sore throat yesterday, and it sort of evolved into, a, <laughs> it's really it sounds annoying. Like, sounds, sounds like a broken heart to me. Yeah, maybe. I mean, runny nose, stuffy nose, you name it. It, it could be that new hoof and mouth disease going around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I tell you, I remember when my f- my first whale broke up with me, I felt kind of the same way. It's, you know, flu-like symptoms, but it's just, it's just a broken heart. It will take some time. And uh, I guess we'll have to go to Jason's place and find out. J- Jason, is there some whale at your house? or It wasn't in the pool this morning. Mm. So, oh. But I don't know. I mean... Maybe, maybe still in transit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, my my next place to look would be, you know, maybe just kind of go down the hallway, go past the bathroom, turn left, turn right, past go to the, the bedroom. Uh, that's actually that's actually my some questions. I mean, like I'm not saying the whale's here. I don't know, but uh, but when the whale was with you guys, where where was the whale? Where should I look? I, I can tell you where the whale was with me in the waterbed, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it was. It has a thing for beds. I know. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, it has. A, yeah, you're right. It does have a thing for beds. Um, you put it under your bed. So that that's what you decided to do. I don't think the whale had a choice. No wonder the whale's out of there. Fuck. I'd have had enough of that crap too. <laughs> Long time ago. So, well, Jason is. He's being kind of kind of shady about where the whale is. Uh, I guess we'll find out another time. Uh, maybe he'll, he'll update us. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll find but, out sooner or later. Maybe he'll find maybe out. Whale will update his Facebook. Yeah, exactly. On his Facebook. Yeah, why don't we go look there? Because you know he updates it. I mean, <laughs> he's got, it, it, look, he's got internet access. You know, you know, he might be hanging out with a RoboCat for a while. I think the two yeah. of them might be kicking it for a while, and who knows? You know, I don't know. Yeah, strange stuffs happening around here. Yeah, strange. Man, geez, we got to talk about some stuff here. Like the one thing that we never got to in the last podcast, and we decided to save it to this one, was that basically Pete and Gamester. And Splatter Trigger and Spider One A all met up in New York City. Like you, you got to explain this. This is fantastic that all you guys got to meet. I'm quite jealous about it. That would have been an awesome meeting. It it was, it was really awesome. I mean, it's always great meeting fellow YouTubers in the community and, and meeting them in person. Pete, you're much taller than I thought in person. <laughs> you, yes, and the know. others were much shorter than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't tell from the Xbox avatars. You just can't tell. Right, the avatar no. doesn't do justice. No, you know, it was a lot of fun. I was actually up in um, the New York area for, for work and uh, contacted Spider-1A and he, if you guys don't know, he's a fantastic YouTuber. He reviews a lot of TurboGrafx games, uh, pinball machines. Guys, definitely check this, this guy we out. Had him out on episode, we had him on the show, episode two. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he does the show Turbo Views. Yeah. Right. Right. Awesome. Very down to earth guy. I guess he recently he's from he's from uh, where is he from Philadelphia or somewhere like that, right? And so he he just recently moved uh, to New York for work, and him and I contacted, and it kind of turned into hey, letting Pete know that we're in the area, and yeah. let letting uh, Splatter Trigger, uh, and he he's also was a guest. He was on what episode was episode three? the Working Designs episode. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Three. And again, a fantastic YouTuber, guys. To check him out. And so it turned out to be the four of us uh, meeting, and it was it was a lot of fun. We we had uh, we went to Times Square, had dinner at uh, Dave and Buster's, went to the Nintendo World. Uh, it just was a blast. It was freezing cold. I mean, f- wicked cold. <clears throat> yeah, uh, we were walking down the street and gamesters like trying to talk, and it's like bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> his, yeah, his mouth is like that literally numb. Sun down here, you know. <laughs> it's a little different than the, the seventy degree weather we get down here in Arizona this time. Yeah, of year, for sure. Uh-huh. Uh, but no, it, it, was, it was it was it was I couldn't even hardly talk. My mouth was numb. <laughs> uh, you know, it was cool to go to Rockefeller's. Uh, you know, the center there. Uh, see see the ice skating rink, uh, the tree. It was you know the season. You know, it was really cool. That's cool. Yeah, but it, yeah. it's trippy, isn't it? Like because we I know we all do these um, video shows. You know, basically when you think about it, it's like these video shows and. 
you kind of get to know everybody through their videos. And it's really strange that when you actually do finally meet people from YouTube, it's that you really actually do know them. Like, right. I think, you know, you, you kind of expose yourself by putting yourself on video and putting yourself out there to the world. And uh, so, yeah, you get to really know people. Like, I, I know when me and uh, Gamester met, it was just like, it was, it was a bit surreal for the first five minutes because you've only ever seen this person in video form. And then now all of a sudden you're meeting in real form and uh, it takes a, a, a five minutes to adjust to that. Then all of a sudden you know each other for years because you all have so much in common and all you right. guys have, like, we all do, video games as a major hobby and, yeah. and a bit of an obsession, you might say, <laughs> as well. So Yeah, it was because before you got there, John, uh, we went up to Spider-1A or Chris's apartment, myself and Ed. And we just sat on the couch and we talked for like two and a half, three hours, you know, because John yeah. got there later in the day than us. But it was like so nothing, you know, no awkward pauses. Like, fuck, we just talking about all kinds of random shit. And it was yeah. just, you know, like you knew these people your whole life almost, you know, it's Not really all, like yeah, a but family. you know them. <laughs> We're all family, really. It's what it feels like. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It, it, I've met, actually, I was thinking about it. I've met like 18 something plus YouTubers in the community. It's pretty, pretty wild. Um, you're you're like the seven de seven degrees of separation by uh, yeah Gamester eighty one. Yeah, on I'm YouTube. actually the only one of the four of us has actually seen all of us in person. You yeah, know? it's weird, really yeah. wild. So, so it, 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 it was really cool. It was a really awesome experience. Uh, we got kind of lost. We we were at um, Penn Station. We were walking to Nintendo World, and we got kind of sidetracked. And we we eventually found it. Uh, and it was really cool. They had it laid out really nice for for the holidays. Uh, I'll, I'll, Pete, what'd you pick up there? Unless you took kind of say what you picked up. Um, well, the thing is, like when I first was going to Nintendo World, I was buying basically a ton of crap. So I, <laughs> I basically bought everything I ever wanted from that store. So now when I go there, it's so I'm kind of light on what I buy. I usually just get a shirt, maybe a little figure or something like that. But uh, I bought a, a shirt with Boo on it. One of the Boos from the Mario series. It's just a black shirt with the outline of Boo. And I got, uh, what the hell else did I get? I you you always get me some souvenirs if you wanted to, you know. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got <laughs> something else too. I forget. What, oh, of course. How could I forget the twenty, the U.S. edition of Super Mario Brothers? Um, I had the Japanese one, but I, you know, this this U.S. release is so limited that I figure I'll just buy it. it so, hey, sorry. Can we talk about that for a second? Because that that is actually going to become super rare, isn't it? Because it's not in any store right now. No, it's it's not going to get restocked either. It was just that one shipment. So yeah, you know, people talk about rare games and stuff and how they won't hold their value, but this is definitely one that will. Now, of course, here's the problem. Probably a lot of people did the same thing. A lot of people are buying this game just to keep it sealed. I'm sure they bought multiple copies because it's only $30. Yeah. So it makes it a bit easier to do that. So maybe in it, the first couple of years, it might not go up too high, but like 10 years from now... When people start selling off their copies, their extras, it's gonna be worth a lot. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's cool. I like the the way it's displayed, the <laughs> box and stuff. And they had a lot there at Nintendo World, at least when we were there. They said they went through about half their initial shipment, so they had like three or four cases left. They had quite a few. Oh, wow. So, but I remember a couple of days before, I went to GameStop and I was shopping locally, and I just couldn't find it anywhere. Like you said, Johnny, and just it was hard to find. Like people pre-ordered and it was gone. <laughs> I'm actually shocked because somebody at work was asking me, they're like, oh, do you think, you know, we'll be able to, you know, like, do you know where I'll be able to find this game? I'm like, oh, I'm sure you'll be able to find it anywhere. And they're like, no, it's sold out everywhere. And I'm like, that's weird. Nintendo doesn't usually do that. But they actually did that with the, do you remember the Metro Prime trilogy? Pete, do you know about that yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's that actually went really thing, fast. Yeah. I know. I had to buy it and it cost me like $60. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gone up a little bit more, hasn't it? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't checked. I bought it a couple of months ago, maybe oh. like two months ago, three months ago, and I paid like sixty dollars for it. So yeah, it's no, that's definitely, not bad, actually. No, it'll probably go up though because that game went out of print really fast, really fast for that. And Nintendo doesn't usually do this, am I correct? So I, I've not, I've not known Nintendo do this too often, where they release a game in limited, uh, limited quantities. Usually, they always, you know, quite quite a few of them. I right. always yeah. keep it at the exact same price. They never break that price. They never bring it down to twenty bucks for. No, I think the know, same is going to be true with. I know Jason, you picked up one. It's the the limited edition Red Wii as well, right? That in the right. mm -hmm. DS. I think those are supposed to be limited edition as well. Although those are a little bit more common in the stores at this point. Anyway, we'll see beginning of the year. Yeah, they is are. That, they are more common in stores because there's three different varieties. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know what yeah. I mean? You can get black, white, and now the limited red. And a lot of people, unless you're a collector, you know, 
you're not really going after that one per se. People does, does the red does the red one come with the game? It comes with uh, Wii Sports. Uh, it's basically it's just like the older Wii's, except this one instead of getting Wii Sports Resort, you get New Super Mario Brothers Wii. That's mm-hmm. right. Yep, that's yep. right. Yeah, and it comes in like kind of a weird package. It doesn't come with normal case. It comes in like a, a sleeve, right? The yeah, you, you don't get the yeah. plastic uh, cases. No, they come in. Yeah, you're right. The sleeves. Mm-hmm. I gotta go so, on eBay. I gotta have a look at this. <laughs> I don't want to miss out. I've on noticed myself. though since the whole All- Mario All Stars was re- have been released for the Wii, the actual NES Super Nintendo version actually has gone down in value, or at least on eBay. Oh, it's has it? Yeah, because yeah, it's more common, and hmm. you know it's interesting. But I definitely the one game I'm looking for is the Super Mario uh, World and Mario All Stars uh, Super Nintendo in one cartridge. You guys seen that? Oh yeah, that was that came out. That was rare. That was rare. Yeah, it was only available in like a package, you know, in a bundle as well. Yeah, they did that for a real short time. Yeah, it's not super. It probably sells for about twenty five bucks, you know. But yeah, it, it's a cool little piece to have. You know, it's kind of something I wish they added to the new. I'm surprised they didn't put Mario World on the new one. Seriously, so what's with that? You know. So wow, I was going for fifty seven dollars here, seven bids on on the American one here. Wow, really? Wow. Yeah, see, stuff, see, they people can't get. <laughs> it's got a day left, and it's at fifty seven dollars. No. They're making twice their money, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, I should have bought and like. Well, that's the thing. I don't, I'm I I, it, I collect in a game, but I don't sell to make profit. I don't ever look to make right. money on my collection. And you know, there's two two types of collectors out there. There's people who look into to buy and, and sell and make a profit, and those who are actually looking to collect oh, and enjoy it. Right, like we are. Yeah. So. Hell, if these things are selling for a hundred bucks, I'd be there buying every freaking one I could. I'll tell you that much. Hell, if I'm gonna make seventy dollars per one I sell, well, yeah, but you never know, right? Like, like you guys never. walked in. To Nintendo World, and there was tons of them. You're thinking, ah, it's everywhere. Yeah. Well, I don't. Uh, Pete was like, he was on the kind of on the, on the fence that when he was about to leave. He's like, should should I get it? Should I not? Yeah. I remember because you know, Pete, you, you already have the Japanese version. And I'm like, you yep. know what? You you better you better end up getting it, man. <laughs> so, yeah. So he he ended up picking it out, but I think it's a smart one. And we had a really cool picture of of all of us holding our our games. I know Ed. Yeah, that's a good I, one. That's a good one. Ed had picked this up earlier on Amazon, so he didn't have his copy, but it was a. It was a cool picture. You can see it on our Facebook pages too. But uh, yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun, and and also um, went to Dave and Buster's, which I mentioned, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we played some classic arcade, you know, not classic arcade games, but a lot of fun arcade games, a lot of shooters and, and racers and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, specifically was, the Mario Kart GP. Yeah, awesome. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Takes your picture, yeah. has your face there. Yeah. You can race as like Pac Man and stuff. It was pretty cool. And the thing about that game though is the power ups are random. So like before you start a race, each yeah. person gets three random power ups. Yeah, and yeah. there's a lock on system and everything. So it's definitely watered down. Um, yeah. But when you play on the expert courses and stuff, that it's a hard game. Is that a Namco or is that Nintendo? I was going to say I think Namco did that. I think Namco. Namco because you can play as Pac Man and the Ghost and some other character. I don't know. I can imagine how that conversation went with Nintendo and Namco. Hey, yeah, we think we can do your game. Mm, do your yeah. most beloved franchise. That's it, it does, they let it does do it. play a lot different than you know the home versions for sure. It, it's a it's a good game though. It's a good game, but you can kind of see it's developed by different people. I want to play some Daytona. I played that today actually. Let's go really? away. I was at I was at Dave and Buster's today, and right. I played some Daytona, uh, which is awesome. I prefer the at all the racing games at my Dave and Buster's. That's still my favorite one, despite how old it is. It's, how many do they have linked up? Uh, eight, I believe. Yes, that's what I wanted to hear. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. It's fun. It's I definitely fun. don't want to go on that after you eat a big meal, though, I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> the thing <laughs> rocks back and forth. And uh, another game I was playing, too, with a lot of rumble, was uh, the first time I ever played it, actually. It was the new addition to Dave & Buster's by me. was Hydro Thunder, the original arcade version. Hydro oh. Thunder! Nice. Nice. It's awesome. It's it took a bit for me to get used to because there's I guess you're basically supposed to play with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand on the boost lever, which you use to boost and jump right. and all that yes. stuff. Yeah. Um so that took a bit of getting used to. But I played as my ship the rad hazard, of course. And it was fun. Um it it's took some getting used to, like I said, because it's bumping you around and you're trying to steer steer with one wheel and i think they use like wave physics so when you're going against the waves in the game you kind of feel that in the steering wheel it's kind of hard to explain no i totally know what you're talking about yeah they mm-hmm. do but it was so, fun i played a couple of tracks and uh i don't know if this is uh, on all at all dave and busters but 
least by me, Wednesdays, it's half price to play games. So it was like only 35 cents per play on Hydro Thunder, which was awesome. Wow. They always do those point things. It was really confusing. You know, you don't know how many how much money you're spending and they do that intentionally well, yeah we calculated it out and it came out to be about 35 yeah. cents per play that's cool that's cool not a bad deal no it was a lot of fun david Buster's was a lot of fun um it was just really cool hanging out with the guys and just catching up we had, we had pretty good dinner and you know um, how, how long did you guys hang out for for the day then because i know uh you, you were waiting on uh who, who well, are you waiting on how it worked out was yeah Ed and I were the first ones to make it there because Chris was busy with something. Uh, so Ed and I met up around, well, we both got to the city around one thirty, I believe, but yeah. it took us like a half an hour to find one another because, you know, we, we were going up and down the streets and he's like, I'm on this street. And I'm like, well, I don't know anything besides avenues and streets. Like he was giving me street names and I'm like, I don't know where that is. So yeah. we're wandering around. We're trying to find each other. We finally meet up and then we grab something to eat real fast at a deli. We talked for like half an hour. Then we met up with Chris and then we went back to Chris's apartment and we basically hung out there and talked until Gamester got to the city around, what was it? Six thirty-seven. Yeah. It was around seven ish. Yeah. 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 So we met him at the train station and then we went to Nintendo world first and yeah. then we went to Dave and Buster's and then we went back to Chris's well, place. Hey Pete, speaking of Nintendo world, did you hear that Nintendo announced uh, Nintendo world in Tokyo is going to have, uh, they're going to actually display the, the 3ds on January 8th. Wow. Playable. Oh man! So it makes no, you wonder well, if uh, they're going to do that, you know, here possibly. I don't know. I mean, not now. I would totally be closer to to the date of the, the American release, in March. I, I don't well, know. They're, they're holding a conference at the American Nintendo World for the press. Yeah, uh, where they're going to discuss. They're going to have 3ds's on hand for demo. They're going to discuss price release date. So hopefully, they permanently install a couple of them in there after that date. Highly doubt it, though. Can Can I read yeah. you a list? list of games that they actually yeah it's awesome on. isn't it it's great list of games so definitely do it yeah N- nintendo nintendo dogs and cats kid icarus uprising the legend of zelda rink in time 3d steel diver pilot wings resort new pilot wings that's gonna be awesome mm. ar games nintendo 3ds camera uh konami is re- uh, releasing hideo Con- J- jimmy metal gear solid uh snake eater 3d oh uh, yeah uh, Winter 11 3D Soccer. Capcom is St- Super Street Fighter 4 3D Edition. Woo. Resident, e- Resident Evil uh, Revol- Revelations. I'm in. Tecmo is Samurai Warrior Chronicle. Dead or Alive uh, Dimensions. Namco uh-huh. Bandai is Ridge Racer 3D. Mm, which is cool. Interesting. That's interesting. Level 5 is Professor Layton in the Mask of Miracle. Mm. And here's some games shown as trailers. You got Capcom Super Street Fighter uh, 4 3D editions, uh, another trailer. And then uh, Square Enix is Kingdom Hearts 3D. Uh, jump, jump Out, Bust a Move 3D. Sega is Super Monkey Ball 3D. Uh, Namco Bandai is Gundam, Gundam uh, the 3D Battle. Yeah. Tales of Abyss, One Piece Unlimited Cruise SP, Pro Basketball, uh, Famista 2011, Xavius. And uh, Marvelous is Animal Resorts, um, 3D Beauty Clock. There's, you know, Star Fox, uh, Star Fox 64 3D is going to be on demo, or uh, at least uh, the trailer, which is, that sounds like it's going to be cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Paper Mario. Wow. Oh, cool. And Animal Crossing Mario Kart. And Street Pass uh, Me Plaza. So. Huh. Wait, Animal, wait, Animal Crossing and Mario Kart? Mm-hmm. They're two separate games, right? Yeah. Okay. Because you're like, okay. Never. Oh, you thought it was Animal Crossing Mario Kart? And I was like, like what, what are we it's, doing? It's actually crossing. They're merging the two games together. Like, dude, oh my awesome. god! Can you imagine? Two two, oh. two separate games. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of good games actually. I'm, I'm kind of jealous. I wish Harvest I was going my to crops back. while rolling around in a go kart. I love it. I'm so. I'm telling you, I got my tax return this year. I think my tax return is like seven hundred dollars. I feel like going out and buying every launch game and, and the system whenever it comes out. That'd be awesome. That's a really I love strong stuff like- launch uh, set of games there. Yeah. Well, that's like, not yeah. that's not set in stone for launch. Those are just the games. No, no. I yeah. I know I know that more than anybody. I'm just saying, I'm I'm excited. But you got Mario Kart, just- Star Fox. You've got Metal Gear. Um, it's yeah. just you know Street Fighter, Pilot Wings, Ridge Racer, Zelda Ridge Racer in Pil- 3D. That's cool. Dude, Pilot Wings is going to be weird in 3D. Can you imagine? I've never, it? I've never played a Pilot Wings game. Really? Wow. wow. I'm not a huge fan. They're they're they they're 
you know, the classic that they always came out with a Nintendo system back in the day. Remember that? Yeah. The last uh, one I remember coming out was uh, the 64 one. Is there one later than that? No, that was the last one. That was the last one, as yeah. As far as I know, I've never seen one. Well, I always remember the Super Nintendo one and then the 64 one, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Dead or Alive, interesting too. Uh, 3D fighting. Um, yeah. I thought it was going to be Dead or Alive 3D vo- volleyball. I was just going to start laughing. Dude, th- those jiggles, you know, just jumping Dad. up and down. 3D. Dude. I'm in. I'm in. in. <laughs> Diggle bitties. <laughs> <laughs> Diggle bitties 3D. I, 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 you know, it's one of those things. I'm, I will camp out all night to get that machine. I, I'm, yep. I, I don't know. I'm excited about playing 3D games on a handheld. I know it's going to be cool. Um, I, I, because I, yep. I also know, like, sorry, game hey, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. sorry. No, you go ahead. Don't tell me what to do. Don't, don't tell me what to do, fool. I'm sorry, Johnny, no. Ladies first, I insist. Go ahead. Ooh, oh, oh, well, thank you, Gamester. It's very nice. I was going to say that uh, Brian from Game Deals, he, he actually got to try it out when he was down at E3. And he's, I'll, I'll actually say he's a pretty tough critic. And he said he was impressed with the 3D. He thought it was pretty cool. So I'm pretty into that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm about 90% sure that I'll be going to Nintendo World to camp yeah. out for the 3DS. Totally. Which I think would be a lot cooler than camping out at say best buy you know absolutely i'd rather go to nintendo world absolutely i'd rather go to nintendo world too <laughs> the only place in the world where you can use picto chat and actually have it put to use you know what you need to do pete john penises <laughs> you need to get a generator and take your laptop or your pc and just do a live I would stream never, all night i would long. never take my laptop to the city on just, the streets of the city you just need to do a live stream in your tent. Well, why not why not Pete? seriously to the city I don't yeah know. You know. well maybe if i bring my netbook that might be an idea what's wrong with taking the computer to the city are you worried about uh, getting bugged i have a pretty expensive laptop i'll just say that you'll bust out those ninja stars you keep in your back pocket <laughs> screw them up i'm sure the whale would come in and save you if you get it's, it's a bulky and a heavy it's a gaming laptop so mm. it's it's not the lightest thing in the world yeah just bring your netbook if you have a netbook everyone's wondering but, where the whale went when pete goes down there with his laptop he's getting mugged right the whale just comes out of nowhere just tail slaps the shit out of the guy oh it's like free willy <laughs> <laughs> oh free guys I fo- just want to give you a heads up real quick just want to shoot in here real quick uh gamestop is taking reservations for the 3ds as of now so oh what really 25 to 50 docks down yeah uh, well, i'll, I'll put a I'll hundred dollars down no problem yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that. I I was wondering if they were going to. I I went and ordered Dead Space two the other day. I should have should have asked them about that. Huh. Okay. I'm surprised I didn't mention it. I was in there yesterday picking up some stuff. Well, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it. I got a, like a tweet about it. Uh, something from GameStop, and I just wanted to make sure. And I went through now. I'm on GameSpy right now, looking it up. And sure enough. Uh, Jump yeah. on that, guys! And all, seriously, all the listeners out there, jump on that as soon as possible. Because yeah. if you're interested in this machine, because I remember the Wii, everybody's like, "Yo, yeah, there'll be tons of them." Then all of a sudden, gone. Yeah, gone. you gone. want if you want the Nintendo 3DS, go on pre-order it now today. Don't don't wait for next week. Next week will be too late. Hey, Long you know it- what? To add on to that, you guys, another thing we forgot right now. People that are listening, this is our first podcast of 2011. Oh, geez, yeah. Nice. So, people, let's make that a New Year's resolution. Go order that. Get on it. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Pete, you're, you're hyped for this, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm hyped because I love new system launches. And to me, me, too. The, the Connect and the Move just didn't do it for me. So, this is the first yeah. new system to come out since the PS3. So, yeah. you know, I, I can't wait. I get totally hyped for this stuff. I, it's funny. I'm like you. I, I get. I always have been this way. I get so hyped. I love reading about launch games and you know, like sneak peeks of like you know, seeing some screenshots and then the. I wait. just love the day one. Yeah, the wait yeah. online oh, and then yeah. the day one purchases, like getting the launch, picking out it the feels launch so ma- games. I, you I, want. I don't want to sound, yeah, sound hokey, but it seems magical, right? It seems like a really yeah. magical, fun thing. You know, it's it's, it's, it's Christmas for grown ups. Come on, and kids. <laughs> and kids. <laughs> and kids, yeah. What I have a question for you guys. What what's your fondest memory of picking up a game on launch day? What was your most fondest memory? Go for it, guys. Jason? I, um I really had a fond memory of getting my Nintendo Wii. 
I know that's not like super retro or anything, but um, yeah, my Nintendo Wii. I just real brief on the story. I I I grabbed my Game Boy Advance. I got my snow jacket on. Like I was prepared to be there all night, right? And I went to a place called Fred Meyer, which is in the Northwest. John, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're I know. I know Fred Meyer. Oh, they have Fred Meyer up there too. No, no, I go in the I go in the states. Many oh, times. okay, okay. So you guys know Fred Meyer. Wait. So I'm out front at Freddy's there, just waiting, and um, a line starts to form behind me. I was the first one there. I was there like 10 p.m. And they open up the following day at 7 a.m. So oh, you went at 10 p.m., eh? I, I was going to wait all night long. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm sitting there. This is like the only time I've ever sat out all night to wait for a system, too. Just to add. Wow. So I'm prepared. I'm ready to go. So anyway, line starts to form. And uh, this this chick walked up with her mom. And she was like, uh, is this, are you guys waiting for Nintendo Wii? And I'm like, yeah. I'm waiting, you know. And I'm playing like Yoshi's Island 2 or whatever on my Game Boy Advance. Just kicking it. She's like, okay, well, I'm going to head over to the Fred Meyer, which was in Oregon City, which is about 10 minutes away. She's like, I'm going to go over there. And oh, no, no, no. I said, call me. If you go over there and there's not a big line, call me. Here's my number. So she went over. She got there and she said, they're going to start releasing these at midnight. I said, you're shitting me. What? You're shitting me. She goes, yeah, get over here. I'll hold a spot for you. I'm number number 55 in line. Oh, I I freaking you! I I packed up that chair so fast, man. I was to my car. Anyway, I bolted over there. She held my spot. Nice. I got in line. They only had a hundred systems. There was about two hundred people in line by the time they opened their doors at midnight. And that, and I thank her for allowing me to get my Nintendo. He banged her. You know what? (laughs) I didn't. I didn't. But you know what? She's still on my friends list on the Wii. I still communicate and we do play. And actually, I introduced her to Donkey Konga. I went over to her house and we played some Donkey Konga. That's what you want to call it these days? Hey, it's up to you. She was playing with my bongos, kids. She was playing with my bongos. Oh, that's good. So whatever. Anyway, but that is a true story. That is definitely my fondest memory. Like like we said on the Christmas special, I got a lot of my consoles for Christmas, like as a kid, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, but that one, how about you gamester? You got something there? Yeah. You know, probably the Nintendo 64, I picked it up at Toys R Us and I just remember the feeling of picking just the anticipation of getting that system, uh, playing, you know, the arcades, uh, and seeing, you know, cruising USA, killer instinct. And you see the ads for the ultra 64, you know, I'm like, Huge Oh man, hype. Huge hype. and then, you know, Nintendo power, you know, subscribing to that, that back in the day, there's so hyping the, the, the system up. Right. So I'm just like stoked. You know, like 14 years old. I'm like, oh, this is going to be freaking awesome. Awesome. Pick it up. Sure enough, man. I picked up uh, Mario World. I forget what the other game I got. Maybe it was Wave Race or something. I forget the other one, but uh, not Mario World. Um, Mario, 60, Mario 64. Sorry. Uh, and it, it was just awesome, man. Just an awesome game. Went to my buddy's place and we literally played it all night. Oh, and yeah. Fantastic. And I was just blown away with like the analog stick. And I'm like, dude, this is so amazing. And the controller. Um, you know, just the graphics, it's a 3D environment. It was like the one of the, I think Mario, uh, Mario 64 was probably one of the first games I actually played in the 3D kind of world, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, this, for this, sure. This, this is crazy. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Like, this yeah. is, I remember the water scene, like when the levels you go like swimming and stuff, right? I'm like, it was crazy. It was crazy, you know, right? They had like, didn't they have like whales? I think they had my, my whales. I don't know, but <laughs> it was. It was an awesome game, awesome system. Definitely lived up to my hype. Still one of my favorite systems even today. Uh, just, just really fun memories of doing that for sure. You know, um, Pete, how about you, buddy? Well, I don't have any crazy stories to go along with it, but probably just the hype of picking up the Nintendo DS, waiting in line for the DS, the Wii, the 360, and somewhat the GameCube. But I would, I would probably say my most like hyped waiting in line and everything was probably for the Wii. Uh, that was probably like the, the biggest anticipation, the longest I had waited on a line for any system. So a day straight for the Wii. Wow, you 3DS? Yeah, th- it's an uh, entire day straight. Um, 3DS, I'm not sure what time I'll camp out for it in the city. Probably no less than 24 hours. In the city. Uh, that'll, that'll be awesome, dude. You have to bring a camera down too and, and do a video. On yeah, it. I'll bring the camera. I, sh- I should. Well, I'll have to look into getting some kind of generator. How much does, how much does a portable generator cost? <laughs> Five thousand dollars. You're taking my idea now. You like my I, idea. Okay. I remember. Yeah, I remember going like you know. It kind of reminds me of like seeing Star Wars, right? You have, you see those freaking diehard fans who have like camped out like for like weeks and weeks, right? Yeah. For the anticipation yeah. of the release. I had a buddy, a family friend of ours, actually speaking of which, he was on the cover of Time Magazine or something like that for because he waited 
I think it was like six months in line for Star Wars Episode One. Oh God! <laughs> by the it, time, it by the time he got done, by the time the movie came out and he watched it, he looked like a Wookiee. Oh, totally. <laughs> if we know, no, he, he would have looked like George R. Banks. <laughs> so he he saw it at the Hollywood the man uh, the man theater, whatever the famous theater in Hollywood. You know, so he's like he was like yeah, first theater, first yeah. in line, and it was crazy because they had like the the reason I bring this up because he had the generator. And they had like they had Wi Fi hooked up, or you know, they had internet somehow hooked up, and it it it, it was back in 1999, so it was a pretty cool setup, you know. Uh, Wait, they, what, was, what was his job like? How did he? Well, what they this? did, they took they took uh, turns. They had like I think there was like six guys, and they would just like save each other spots in line. So they would actually go to work, and they'd come back and reserve. They just had alternating schedules. They made that shit happen. You know why it was worth it when they got to see the movie, though, right? Episode one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was a ten out of ten movie guy. Come on. Yeah, Misa Jar 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 <laughs> Misa loves this movie. Walk out, Misa they walk out of there so delirious, like, oh my oh, god, I'd be so pissed. But no, it was it was cool because actually, I think like George Lucas acknowledged it and stuff. It was like you know, uh, why were you fooling him in the lineup or something? Yeah, I think yeah, he was like the official line guy for Star Wars, and he, you know, he made national publications and stuff for it. But like, thanks anyway, for waiting not, online. Like, You're the craziest bunch of people I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I he just, was sweating bullets. Eh? Going, oh my god! When yeah. did they see this movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Disappointed. What have I done? They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Misa don't, don't know what I've done. Sir. <laughs> oh no, Misa <laughs> messed up. <laughs> oh god, am I? Anyways, I'm not going to get into an episode one. Anyway, yeah, we're not going to Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about games here, but I just that kind of remind me of how I think. Just think there's going to be some diehard Nintendo fans who are probably going to camp out. Maybe not six yeah. months, but uh, you know, obviously not six, <laughs> six months. months. It's coming out. It's coming out in three months, but um. No, it's it's gonna be awesome. Spend your Christmas in front of freaking Nintendo World. I don't even think they'd let you camp out six months in front of freaking Nintendo World. Nobody would let you do that. No, no. they wouldn't. No. You know, but, but Fred Meyer, anyways, yeah, totally guess, fine. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of um for myself. I've I've been at so many uh, launches for so many systems. Um, I'm trying to think of a good one. You know, I'll just talk about the N64 one. Is it's a really easy one for me. Is that um I got the call from uh, EB Games GameStop. Uh, you know that this is because I pre-ordered it. But the cool thing about it was, is that Rob, his family, how unusual is this? They actually rented a Japanese uh, Nintendo sixty-four, and so we got, we got to play Super Mario Brothers, you know, sixty-four. And we got to, we got, I, I went over. He calls me. He's like, "You got to see this game." And I, I came over and I was like, "Oh my god!" My jaw was on the ground. I, you know, as you know, games were saying you'd never seen anything like that at the time. You know, it just kind of blew your mind. Uh, and so we got to see it a little bit ahead of time before the American version got released. And then I got the call that morning and I went down and pick it up. And uh, my only memorable story is that in, you know, in front of me, I got the machine, but I didn't have any game for it. I didn't, for some stupid reason, I didn't pre-order a game. I was, oh yeah, this is a good one. I like yeah, I just one. thought there'd be tons of them. I just thought there'd be tons of them. And then, so this guy and his girlfriend are standing in front of me and they got their, um, you know, they're, they're Nintendo 64 and a copy of Mario 64. And they're like, um, and his girlfriend's like, oh, you, do you need Mario 64? He's like, no, I guess we don't need this, do we? And she's like, oh, let's put it back then. And he turns to me, he's like, oh, do you want it? I'm like, yes, definitely. Totally give it to me. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> so so, so, he, so I, I, I'm sitting there grinning from ear to ear. I'm like, yes, you fools. You <laughs> fools. You fools. And I stood there. Yeah, and we're just about to hit the cash register. We're getting there, and uh, he, he's like, "Wait a second, maybe maybe we should have gotten rid of it. Maybe we like that was the only reason to have the system." What else? There was, was nothing else at launch. Pilot wings. Yeah. That was that was it. Yeah, this is a real legitimate story. I even I, I can't understand it now. What these guys were thinking, and um, and so he, he finally turns. He's like, "Oh, he's like, actually, we can we change kind of change our mind. Can we get it back." And I'm like, "No." He's like, no, no, seriously, man, seriously. He's like, can we get it back? And I just, I just stared kind of in front of me. I'm like, no. I just totally turned off on them. I'm like, there's no freaking way you're getting this back. Why would they get sold out of it? Yeah, oh yeah, there was not to be had. There's not to be had. So, um, I let them go and pay. I couldn't give a shit how sad they were because I knew I was going to be happy. And and oh, actually, I do have another freaking story. This is funny. I never said this before. Uh, I forgot all about it actually. And 
I'm really particular. I'm, I don't think I'm this bad anymore, but I used to be really funny back in the day because I'd want to take a system home and kind of do my own special unboxing. I can't have like, like I wouldn't even, it's, it's not a ceremony. I wouldn't have candles or anything. I but don't it would know just, about that. I, <laughs> it would just be me and kind of the machine. And I'd, I'd be opening it up and I just wanted my moment just to, to look through the machine and to, to check it out and then turn it on and just to have my moment with it. That's, that's basically it. So I drive home and uh, basically uh, I used to live in my parents' place and uh, they had a, I had an entire basement suite thing. It was kind of cool at the time, actually. And so the funny thing is I pull up to my house. Uh, this is going to make me sound terrible, too. <laughs> it's funny. I pull up to the house and I'm like, what the fuck? I look in and there's Rob, man. And another friend of mine, Aaron, in in my like video game section of the the downstairs, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? And they're like, they're jumping up like little kids, like they're like off the couch, like ooh. And I'm like, I, I, so I stop the car. I don't I don't take it out of the 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 uh, you know the the, the car. I, I leave it all in there and uh, the trunk. Sorry. And, was, and so I walk in the house. I'm like, and they're like, oh hey hey hey, did you get it? I'm like. Wait a second, what the fuck are you doing in my house? They're like, oh, well, we just came over to see if you were here and the door's open. So we just, and, and you know, just to just be honest, that's that we had a very fun, you know, like w- w- I knew these guys a lot. So yeah, they, they would come over and just hang out if the door was unlocked type of thing. It was not a big deal to me. You know, they weren't wearing, wearing my underwear or anything when I came in. <laughs> so, so no, so anyways, they're just freaking hanging out. It's fine. But I'm like, um, they're like, oh, so can we see? I'm like, no. I said, you got to go. <laughs> like, what are you talking about we gotta go I said you gotta go I said seriously I said I'm having my own unboxing with this I'm playing this on my own like ser- seriously I, I said I always do this I'm not I said, no and I really did it sounds so horrible of me but I didn't want that moment ruined I really wanted to treasure it and cause I was, I was waiting for this machine for years and so they're like well really we, we can't play I'm like no seriously guys just <laughs> and I, I was a bit harsher back then. I'm like, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Seriously, I was like, get the hell out of here. When you what come you back, here? bring a pizza. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? So anyways, they all left with their heads hanging low. You know, they're uh, the worst friend ever award goes to me and I'll take it. And um, <laughs> so, so I, anyways, I went in the house and I had my boxing and I played it and I fucking loved it. And uh, I didn't regret ever doing that, but I was terrible. And I think I've always wanted to say this on the show. Me and Rob would probably wanted to talk about this moment as well, is that I was so mean to Rob back then. I was so mean to him in the sense that he, came, he, he had pre-ordered one and um, his wasn't coming in for like four or five days, something like that. But he, he did own the controller. <laughs> He bought the controller and the black controller. So he was so excited. He would, you know, unbox it every night and look at it. But I was at home playing, you know, the new Super Mario, you know, 64. It was awesome. But he would come over to my house on an evening and uh, he'd come into my room or whatever, hang out. And he'd just watch me play it. And I wouldn't let him play it. I just tortured him. And he said, come on, can I play? I said, no, no, no. I said, this is, and, you know, wait till you get your own. I definitely, seriously, what do you get your own? I, and I was bugging him. I was being funny with him. I was really egging him on a bit. And, but I was being kind of mean, I guess, as well. And, uh, and I remember he, he believing. I said, oh, hey, Rob. I said, just something for you to, to, to remember. And, you know, to, 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 to like, kind of haunt your dreams, I think. <laughs> something like that. And I turned it on and he'd go, it's me, Mario. And, he's, <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, he was, he was so mad. And he went home. Uh, you know, the head hanging low again, but I love torturing about that. But uh, he tried to get me back when the Dreamcast came out. He bought everything, but I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give him any satisfaction at all. It was so funny. It's so funny telling that story again. I feel so mean. <laughs> so, so, Johnny, let me get this straight. You, you, pick, you pick up the system, right? You take it home. Yeah. You unwrap yeah. it and you turn yeah. it on. Yeah. Could, could the same be applied to women, perhaps? You take it home, you unwrap it, you turn it on. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the, yeah. I'll, but I wouldn't have friends of mine hanging over the place first. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus Christ. And the hey, thing is, is I'm home, sure mama? nudity was we involved with both. Yeah, that? I'm sure. If, if 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 Robin came over and you're with a woman, turn her on, and he comes over, you'd be like, "Okay, Robin, you're like, get the fuck out! <laughs> Don't cock mock me." <laughs> you, you know, I won't even get into some stories of silly stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> right on. That's an awesome story, man. It's awesome. 
Yeah, too funny. Yeah, I, I, I sounded like such a bad friend, but I wasn't. But you have to understand back then, me, me and Rob used to bug each other quite a lot in, in, in a funny way. And I used to kind of, you know, I just like torturing him about the N64. I really did. I must admit it. I did. I agree. I, Rob, man, I know you're listening to this, you know, uh, when this comes out. Uh, I apologize for back then. I apologize, but it was funny. You know, being territorial think- over consoles, though, you know, I think it's kind of common, especially being younger. Like, I remember getting a console and then going to school. Oh, and yeah. I remember saying to my younger brother, who would get home before me in school, Kyle, don't touch this thing. Yeah. And I put the controller a certain way. I left the games a certain way. I knew if it'd be touched because I knew that he wouldn't put it back the same way I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I told him, don't touch it. To stay away from it. And I'm like, mom, make sure he doesn't touch it. My mom could care less. You know what I'm saying? As long as he's out of her hair, of course, he'd always play so, with it. I, I remember when I got the PS1, actually, uh, I, my, my best friends uh, during the time, they still are my best friends. They're twins. And we decided the three of us would go in and, and pick one up together, right? Three way. And so we ended up doing this and we made an agreement where we would share the time equally uh, for oh, the PS1. God, and, and they would, oh man, worst idea of my life. Seriously, worst yeah, idea. Of course. Cause they're, they're like, I'd end up buying all the games, right? And then they would use the system two thirds of the time, you know. So <laughs> I'm like this shitty arrangement, you know. Yeah, they're so, twins, eh? So they would always be yeah. at their house. Right, they'd always be at their house, you know. I'm like, I got the the lame end of this stick, the short end of this stick, yeah, stuff. Right. Right. So what happened in the end of the day for that? How did that arrangement yeah. come to an end? You know, I ended up getting my own. I was like, you know, fuck it. I ended up getting my own, and I took my games back. You know, because yeah, yeah. probably had maybe like 15 games. I probably purchased 12 of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so I took uh, all my games back. They're like, oh, no, there are games, too. I'm like, no, that's not how it works now. The, re- <laughs> the agreement is over. I didn't sign any papers. <laughs> this shit, you know, but <laughs> seriously, it's like, I know what you mean by territorial. And like, uh, yeah. it, it was fine. Looking back on it, it was a, it was a terrible mistake. Uh, our friendship survived, fortunately, through all that. But uh, <laughs> it was there's some moments where we Most were Most of like, the time it doesn't, though. Yeah, that's true. Let me let that be lesson learned for everyone listening too. Never, and I think we all can agree, never go in on something like no. this with your buddies or your uh, friends. You know what I'm saying? Don't all pull your money and then buy a console and a bunch of games because whose is it? It's everybody's. Well, who gets what? You don't know. Right. Yeah. You can't figure it out. That's fucked up. Everyone stuff. thinks they have equal share and the console, you can't cut it up. Yeah. Just yeah. don't do it. Just don't. Terrible, terrible idea. So it's yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that that's funny, game series. Isn't it fun? And like uh, what, what we're all talking about in a way is that the ownership of a system. Like, don't you touch my system? It's so true. It's so funny. Like when you look back, like. But then again, I think I understand why back then. I don't know. You were worried about it for some reason. Like you didn't have a lot of money when you were a kid. It was the only thing you probably did own. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. right. <laughs> Go home and play video games after school. That's Pride all I did. Joy. I was like, yeah, that's all I did. <laughs> That's yeah. all I did, you know? Even at, at middle school, they had, like, a Super Nintendo hooked up. And my middle school, after school, like, you could actually go to a class and play Mario Kart and whatnot. It was awesome. Nice. <laughs> you know, it was a school-sanctioned thing. It was pretty sweet. That's hilarious. Yeah, they tried to do it to get kids to come in after school and, like, do your homework after school stuff. Was it right. the same thing for you? Kind of, yeah, same thing. You do your homework, and then they had a ping-pong table, but everyone was playing the Super Nintendo. I mean, that's what everyone wanted to play, and yeah. we played Battle on uh, Mario, Mario Kart, and it was just it was just awesome, man. Good good times. Uh-huh. I had really fun memories of that, but and that's all I did back in the day was, you know, it's not like today where you real world, you know, you have to <laughs> worry about work and stuff, right? Yeah. Live it up. Yeah. Live it up. Boy, you got time. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But, yeah, we, did you know what? That's like, uh, we could do an entire episode on launch systems, you know what I mean? My God. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it's a, a whole other thing, yeah. Can't box. think of tons of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, we went back. Well, let's get back to the 3DS we were talking about, and then get back to what we're talking about. But yeah, sure. so uh, <laughs> what, I guess, we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're so random. <laughs> back to the 3DS and get back to what we were talking about. I don't even remember. Well, well actually, we'll get back to talking about you guys' day. That's where we were at. Oh, I think okay. we all went. I think you you said yours right, and then I think we all four of us can answer the question as far as launch tiles, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But I think it's safe to say all all four of us are very stoked about the three DS. Are we three D uh are we all picking up the three D S launch day? This was curious about I am. I'm picking the mine up. Yep. Jason? Yes, I am. All right. We're all going Jason in. was waiting. If I, we all said no, Jason would have been like, Hell no. Uh, here's <laughs> no, the, yeah. fuck no. I'm picking it up, man. No, I, I you know what? I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you guys right now, okay? Everyone gather around. I'm here, Jason, for you. Shh. What's up? What's going on? 
I have never personally owned a Nintendo DS. Oh, oh my God. Somebody had to say, I don't know. I know. Someone had to say. I'm leaving this conversation right now. No, no. It's, I don't play my DS as much as people would think either, to be honest with you, Jason. So. Because you know what? When the first one came out, I'm like, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. Put it on the back burner. But then mm-hmm. guess what? I heard another DS coming out real soon. So I'm yeah. like, fuck it. I'll just get but that one. Here's, here's the deal, Jason. And no, then it I happened mean, again. A 3DS uh, it's, it's XL. One time or other. A 3DS XLI. A 3DS <laughs> BFFs forever. You know, I'm like, they got all these DSs coming out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm just going to wait until something, until they finally make the one that I want that has all this shit on it. And now look, it's a 3DS. Now, friends, this is the one that daddy wants. Now, I don't know this question. Maybe you guys have the answer to this. Is the 3DS, is it going to be able to play normal DS games? Uh, yes. It better be. Oh, okay. Okay. They're going to be letterboxed on the top screen, I believe. Okay. So it won't be, obviously they won't be in 3D, but they will have, have the games available to play, right? Right. Okay, that, that, that helps a little They'll bit. They'll shoot themselves in the foot if they... Yeah, don't. that's true. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, honestly, Jason, like you were saying, though, with the, the, the DS, it's like they have so many different variations. Like, if you were to take the DS XL and you compare it to the original uh, DS, I mean, they play this, the same games. It's essentially the same system, just, yeah. you know, bigger. Bigger and, and better. Right. Bigger and better. This is different, though. The 3DS is, I think, is just a different playing field. Altogether. I think it's a completely different platform. That's why I'm yeah. on it. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, what's going to be annoying is buying the Nintendo 3DS and, like, you know, seven months later, they release another DS, you know, Nintendo 3DS. And then you know it's going to happen until they release a Nintendo 3DS XL. You know it's going to happen. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Mm-hmm. And then the Nintendo 3DS Micro. <laughs> Right. And then the oh, yeah, 3DS the XL micro vision screen adapter player. Hey, I gotta say, I gotta say, I, I love the Game Boy Micro. And I actually have a couple of them, actually. And uh, just to be able yep. to play Fantasy Star in such a small it's a great way system. to go, it's so fun. The thing is so small. My fingers are so fat for that thing. I had the, the limited edition one, the uh, Famicom, like the anniversary I got that one. one too. Yeah. And it's really cool. And I agree that the image is so sharp on that thing. Yeah. Uh, and the, the screen is so tiny and. It's a fantastic system, but my, my hands are too big for that. I just think it's a lot. The sausage it, yeah. fingers can't do it. Yeah. My, yeah. my sausage <laughs> fingers can't handle that the shit. The cartridges are bigger than the damn machine. It's wild. No, it is wild. It's true. It's like almost half the size, right? I've seen your hands. I think your hands are bigger than the console. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. My palm is bigger than the console, dude. And the console is only like <laughs> an inch, two inches His wide. penis is bigger than the console. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the other day I was thinking I was eating a Twix. It was my Game Boy Micro. What in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway. It's it's a cool I agree with you, Johnny. It's a great, great handheld. Okay, well here here's one. Here's here's something. Here's a good question for everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, out of that list that games to read earlier, if okay, now we know that they're not all available for launch, but let's just hypothetically say that they were, but you could only pick one. <laughs> Which one would you do? I'm gonna start with uh Gamester. Endless Oceans 3D. Oh, oh wait, get out. That, that wasn't that wasn't on the list. Oh shit. Um, yeah. Damn. No, you know, I think I'm looking forward to the new Zelda or Rink in Time 3D. Yeah. That looks that looks pretty sweet. Or you know, uh, Street Fighter 4 3D. I think that looks kind of interesting too. Possibly. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that works. You, you picked my choices right away. Yeah. Those are mine. Yeah. Yeah. Pete. Uh, Zelda. But if I yeah. didn't have to, obviously, yeah, it's the obvious one. If I didn't go with that, I'd probably say Paper Mario, even though we know absolutely no details on it. Yeah, I'm with you. And uh, Jason, Magmax 3D. Oh God! <laughs> so, yes. so, Dino I, Ducks. Dino Ducks. Dynamite Ducks 3D. Dino, you know, I would die. <laughs> Quack attack. If they came out the Dynamite Ducks 3D. I would absolutely die. Oh uh, God! Somebody sent me um a link the other day. Dynamite Ducks is actually in a Sega game. I. I forget what it is. Is it a Sega racing game or something? It's like I don't know. I forget what it is. I'm like, oh my god, he's actually they still bring him back for things? <laughs> really? That game wow. sucked. <laughs> <laughs> like, like seriously, nobody liked it. I've never met a human being that liked that game. Now play the shitty game in 3D. Yeah. Yeah, let's bring him back because nobody played him back in the day. If they don't bring a character like DJ Boy back. At least he had um you know some a kind of a cult following back then. In my, in meanwhile, you guys are like, who the hell is DJ Boy? Right? Any of you guys remember DJ Boy? DJ Boy? What system was it for? It was a, it was a, it was a Sega arcade game. It came out on the Genesis finally. But oh. um, 
Yeah, and you go, we were a kid in roller skates, and you beat up other kids in roller skates. Uh, it's kind of like an anime type style of game, but at the time, it, the graphics were really amazing. And then when it got brought over to the Genesis, it wasn't so hot, but it's kind of like uh, a cult game. I would really say it's a cult game. And for any real hardcores out there, they'll know DJ Boy uh, on the Genesis back then. But I'm not saying that you guys aren't. It's a very unknown game, though. I understand. Even for me, back then, when it came out, I was like, man, like nobody knows about this game. It's really, it made it kind of special that way. But hmm. yeah, we got DJ Boy in 3D. Everybody's like, one person in the podcast is like, yay. <laughs> you know who listens to this? <laughs> and I guarantee there's nobody who would actually be doing that right now. <laughs> um, that's interesting. I don't that's know. Exactly. Yeah, check that out. Yeah. Huh. Dynamite Ducks, the RPG. That'd be amazing. <laughs> the fighter, uh, cross street fighter. Oh, that Dynamite Ducks <laughs> is a secret character in the new yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. That would be incredible. Yeah. He's a playable character in the new Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. I would die. <laughs> so, die. Uh, have any of you guys seen Tron Legacy yet? Well, I guess now would be a good time for me to answer the question. Well, oh, what's we the question? Don't, we don't answer the... the oh, the I forgot. About, everybody forgets about poor Jason. I'm just getting the short end of the stick. <laughs> answer. Star Fox. <laughs> Oh yeah! Boo! No, I'm just kidding. I love Star Fox. <laughs> I can imagine that's a great. I think that'd be a great platform for 3D, though, right? Totally. I Wave Race. It, would I think be, it'd be great for 3D. Wave Race 3D would be awesome too. I would think, right? I'm still waiting for it on the Wii. Yeah. Yeah. No shit, eh? Well, I know what the hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, the 3DS graphics look better than the Wii, so I, I'll take it on the, the 3DS definitely. Yeah. All right, on with your Tron bullshit. Yeah. We got that <laughs> Star Fox business out of the way. Jeez. <laughs> Don't you um, guys go I've, see it? I haven't seen it yet. I'm supposed to see it tomorrow night. I'm supposed to, but I'm kind of like going, eh, no, I don't know. I saw it today. And? Well, I'm not a hardcore Tron person because I've Neither seen my- the original twice. Okay, I rented it on DVD about a year and a half ago. Um, before they, uh, whenever, it was before they announced Legacy, or at least before I even knew about it. So I just wanted to see it for the hell of it. Um, and then I bought the UMD and I watched it on UMD a few weeks ago and i'll have to admit like the the new one was good but i actually think i prefer the original only because the original like i can still appreciate the special effects in that movie like it's so it, it's just got a charm to it that you know yeah. this new one really doesn't have you know with all the new special visual effects you know it, it just doesn't have it's hard to explain it doesn't have what the original tron had this new one though i'll warn you if you have not seen the first tron um i would recommend seeing that first you can watch this and kind of understand what's going on, but it'll make a heck of a lot more sense to you if you know if you watch the first. Otherwise, yeah. you won't get the little hints and the little nuances between some of the characters, like Tron himself. You know, you'll you'll appreciate Tron himself in the new movie if you watch the original. Um, if you don't, you'll be like, okay, what's the big deal about that? You know, you won't really understand it. So definitely, if you can, it's gonna be hard to watch. You'd it's probably i'm not sure if it's still out on netflix i know it was not available to rent um about a week ago uh the dvd is out of production is uh, it really oh, yeah, yeah i got the dvd yeah well the reason for that is they didn't want that to be in stores and have people go into the store and be like oh, oh. hey this is that new tron movie let me see oh. this and then they're like oh this is what the hell is this you know they didn't want that so they actually oh. took it off store shelves um Right, but you know, you know, Disney is going to be releasing a special edition. Of course, which, you know, I'm sure they will. Blu-ray bullshit, yeah, exactly. But yeah. you know, I, I heard Pete that the Jeff Bridges they they actually like digitally made him younger in a lot of the yes. scenes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And that the funny part good. is, when I was first watching the movie, okay, I didn't know. I had no idea that his face was digitized. I was like, wow, they did some a good job with the makeup. I'm like, wow, he looks. Yeah. They made him look really young, and then. <laughs> All of a sudden, like a later scene in the movie, he's sort of like giving a speech to an army and stuff like this. And I know that's when I noticed it. It must have been the lighting or something. But I know I'm like, oh, his face is digitized. And, but it looked really good. Like it looked yeah. amazing. Did you watch it in 3D? Yes, but I'll say the 3D wasn't that great. I heard it, the before the movie off. starts, it, it gives you a thing. It says, just so you know, some of this movie was filmed in 2D and it has not been converted into 3D because that's the way it was filmed. So some of the movie is not even 3D. And the 3D effects I, in the movie aren't even that great. Wait, well, sorry, sorry. So I'm totally confused. Like, what they, they didn't know what the hell they were doing when they were filming it? Going, oh, let's shoot I don't some know. stupid... What? 
They give a warning at the beginning. It says a some parts of this movie are in 2D because that's the way they were filmed. The blah blah blah. They're not in 3D. Well, so is that a, like a, a thing of the storyline that some things like maybe when you're in the real world, it's 2D. No. No. I noticed there were some parts when they're in you know the Tron universe where it was not in 3D. I, I didn't uh, really pay too much attention because I'll be but, honest, the 3D wasn't, it was not Avatar level. It was not that level of 3D. So yeah. there were times where I'm watching it and like it was hard to tell the shift from 3D to 2D at times. So yeah. I don't know. The, it was, well, here's the thing. I don't want to make it sound like I'm hating the movie. It was actually a good movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's pretty heavily driven by relying on you having seen the first. I'll just say though, you know, fans of the original, the reason why some of the reviews are kind of polarized. If you've seen the original Tron, this definitely does it justice. You know, even though I'm not one of those hardcore Tron fans that saw it 10 times, you know, back in the 80s, 90s and stuff. Um, but having seen the original, I can definitely appreciate what they did with this. However, if you have not seen the first Tron, you'll probably say, okay, that had some pretty cool visuals. It was an okay movie. So, mm-hmm. but for the fans yeah. of the original, it's definitely worth seeing for sure. The music's great too, by the way, from Daft Punk. I was going to ask about the music. I'm a huge Daft Punk fan. So. Well, the funny thing is, this whole podcast, I've actually had a playlist of the Tron soundtrack playing in the background on my headphones. I have it That's playing funny. right now. Yeah, good music. Nice. Yeah, everybody's talking about the music for the movie. Everybody's talking about the music. It compliments it very well. Yes. Yeah, Daft Punk. They're, those guys are awesome. Yeah, I, dude, that's a throwback name from the 90s for me. Huh? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. totally worth seeing, though, I would say. See it while you can, while it's in 3D, even though the 3D might not be the best, but I'd say this is a movie worth going to the theaters for, for sure. Here's, I was going to go see it in the IMAX. To, uh, to well, IMAX would probably be much better. Yeah. Very cool. That's awesome. Sure. Thanks for the review. And thanks for no spoilers. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what were you saying, Pete? I was, yeah, I was saying there's a copy of uh, Pure Solar. That new Genesis RPG that's shipping out, people are receiving it now. <clears throat> There's one on eBay right now, ending in an hour and a half. It's up to $120. And the game originally to buy was $35. And it's sold out right now. Wow. So can't, I, that should be here soon. I should maybe hopefully get it tomorrow or the next day. Can't wow. wait to play that game. Yeah, I hope it's worth $120. Yeah, do you know? Wow. Jeez. Based on what I've that- seen, the packaging on it, it's unbelievable. Really? The highest caliber um, homebrew game I've ever seen. Hmm. I don't think yeah, any game, well. uh, no other game can match it based on what I've seen. They give you a poster, the packaging on it is just phenomenal. It looks amazing. So, so did, did, did we check out some pictures of that like about three weeks ago, a month ago? We're looking uh, for well, no, because people are receiving their copies now, so they're unboxing them. Because yeah. previously, no one had really known truly what the packaging was going to look like inside and yeah. everything. Now people are opening it up and it looks really good. Okay, send me a link afterwards. I want to check it out. Are they making a second shipment? You said Pete, or are they going to sell the extra one? Well, yeah, they're kind of secretive about it. Um, I think how it's going to work is they made some extra copies in case anybody's got to them damaged. They replace it. So if they don't use up the extra copies for damaged games, they're going to sell yeah. those on the website. They'll probably put them on eBay. God, I'm not Can you sure. Put a link on that website again, Pete. Pure Solar. P I E R. S O L A R dot com. I did a video for that game way back, like two years ago, when I first found out about it. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Wow. I remember that video. Yeah. It is that time of the podcast for Love Talk with Johnny Millennium. <laughs> Dr. Love, what's going on, Johnny? What's going on, Gamester? I love your deep voice. It's always very tender and soothing. I try. So. This question is from Mata Moo Moo. So, a girlfriend of nearly three years has proposed that we be, quote, good friends. It was a very intimate relationship. Any advice? Is it possible to get out of this friend zone, Johnny? Hmm. Okay, first of all, I have to decipher the question. Uh, the question could be many things. He's written, so a girlfriend, girlfriend of nearly three years has proposed we be good friends. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually, t- it was a very intimate relationship. Any advice? Okay. So they were boyfriend and girlfriend for three years. Uh, I really don't want to comment on this because it could be negative to Matthew Mumu. And I don't want to be, you know, negative. Um, 
you know what? After three years time, I don't know what the details were of you breaking up, but you know, to be good friends, that means she wants to move on and have sex with other people. That's what that means. That's what that definitely means. It's it's horrible. I hate saying that. Wants to be good friends. Uh, yeah, no, she wants to move on. That's why you did the weird little face. Because you know something's up with it too. You did a little face next to the good friends, but and uh, I don't want to be mean. I'm not. I'm not at all. But I think, and I know it was a very intimate relationship. Obviously, any advice? Is it possible to get out of the friend zone? No, I don't think so. When a girl says, "Let's be good friends," it's over. It's done. And uh, it's very hard to get out of the friend zone. You should never be in the friend zone. You know what, my friend? What I would suggest is that you move on and find somebody else. Uh, that doesn't want to be in the friend zone. That she, she's she's kind of going her own, her own direction. You're kind of upset about that. I understand. I feel bad about that. But um, the friend zone is something I haven't seen many people get out of, and I don't think you should. I don't think you should want to get out of that. For, you know, you know, you shouldn't want to try to get back to it. If if it's moving on in a different direction, you know, hey, life is an amazing thing. I remember some breakups I had. I was really upset about them. And I was like, oh my God, my life is coming to an end or I really like this person. I, I don't really want to, you know, kind of like see them go. I don't want to be just good friends with them. But it's funny how things work out. In the end of the day, I've actually met better people afterwards. And it, sometimes it's not right away. Sometimes it's like a year later. But and then you'll meet somebody really fantastic and you're like, I'm glad that that kind of came to an end and we're not in that friend zone and I'm with somebody now who's really awesome who's even better than that original person you know that's pretty cool when that happens and then, you know what it does happen so um, don't look at it as a negative thing look at it as maybe a blessing in disguise right now and I know you're probably not thinking that's really the case but just kind of go with it and you know what stay in contact with her be friends there's no such thing as good friends after a, a breakup um, I just, just kind of, it kind of gets a little weird for a while. So, uh, give, give it time. Definitely try to be friends with her again. Uh, try to get a friendship out of it. But I think that'll come in time. So, anyways, that is my. Uh, I was about to say. Anyways, until next time. Johnny, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do want to jump in real quick. I want to make sure. a comment. It Absolutely. seems like women have a very keen sense, at least from my experiences, that once you're over a woman, yeah. she'll come back. She'll try to come back into the picture. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Like, but I don't want to get that. into I don't want to get into all those kinds of things that I don't right. want to start doing the conniving bullshit there where you try to make her jealous. I don't want to ever give no, negative. No, no. You know no, what I mean? No. But I'm it's with a, you. It's so true. It's your, so your true. vice is your vice is spot on, Johnny. Yeah, uh, you know, it time heals all wounds. And yeah. there's gonna be a point like you mentioned, man, where where uh he's gonna get over her. But don't be surprised if she comes back knock on your door and you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. You know? And I you can can't happen, go grovel uh, back and, and say, oh, okay, I'll take you back in because you're going to get burned. No. Again, yeah, no and get, that, that's the main thing. I mean, the worst thing in the world to do is also is to move on and meet somebody else. And then the old girlfriend phones you up one night and you're like, well, I don't really like the new girl. I still love you. That All that does is it empower her, the, the old girl. And she's like, oh, I still have him on, I wrapped around my finger. And it's just still screw you around. Believe don't me, that the- gets very, very ugly. Messy. You know, absolutely. And you know, anybody who's been out there in the dating world has had that happen to them. It happens. It's happened to me. It's happened to me a bunch of times. You know, where you know it, it happens. It's part of life, type of thing. So I'm trying to teach people what I kind of learned the hard way. That yeah, um, don't it, for sure. Like with a girl like her, you could probably make her jealous. Get you say, oh, okay, that's fine. Well, let's just be good friends, and then you go start dating somebody else right away even if it's somebody you don't like just to make her jealous and then then she'll come back to you and you're like i don't really know about that you know to her and then you, you, you can always get her back that way but i'm not giving you that advice yeah it's probably not a good idea no, that's yeah. negative you know what and the only person who loses is yourself that's you don't want to start that that kind of uh shady dealing and you don't want to screw around the new person that you're with Either I think if a that's girl's, if a girl's done with you, you're done. You got to move on. It's over. Yeah, and then and she's not saying she's she's just saying she just wants to move on. It's nothing. Don't ever take it too personally. It's a, no, don't worry about it. I know I've had my ego bruised so many times. It's it's ha- it happens in the dating world. You put yourself out there, it's gonna happen. You don't you put yourself out it, there, it, nothing's gonna happen. Got to look at it as a learning experience, and that's you know totally absolutely. everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good, I good wish advice. you the best. Uh, yeah, I wish you the best, uh, Matthew Moo Moo. Is it Matu Matu Moo Moo? Is it or is it? Matthew? Yeah, Moo Moo. Because the, the second Moo actually has three O's in it. M A T T E H. I don't know if that's Matthew or Matthew. 
Uh, no, no, no. It's he's some... Matthew tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, moo. totally. So he's got moo, moo. Like the last one's actually a little bit longer. Yeah, moo. 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 All right. Good, good stuff. Uh, so, good job, John. Good luck to you, man. I uh, hope I can, I helped you out a little bit. Welcome to another episode of Gaming Peace Theater with Gamester81. Gamester, what piece of gaming history are you going to share with us today? Today, we're going to talk about the IQ. I'm not talking about um, an Apple device. I'm not talking about a system that makes sees how smart you are. It's actually a system released by Nintendo in 2003. Have you guys heard about this system? Yes. It's <sighs> because of your channel, yes. <laughs> it's a fifth generation console, and it was marketed in China only. It was a joint venture between Nintendo and a Chinese American scientist called Dr. Wei Yan. And what they did was okay. First of all, you guys got to understand the history of China and game. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. This yeah. is the this is the this is that like shiny GameCube, right? It's not that uh, it's not that handheld N64, right? No, incorrect, sir. I'm talking about the the one you plug in for the one you plug into the TV. Okay, it, so the yeah. DVD player GameCube thing? No, it's different. That's the that's the Panasonic Q. It's a different, completely different system. IQ. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Maybe it's I called the IQ. Know. It's 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 spelled I capital Q. It's lowercase I capital Q U E. I've seen so, it. I, IQ player, right? Huh. So so basically, what the, here's the history about it all. Okay, China has, has a huge piracy issue with games, right? So up until this point, up until 2003, Nintendo. And, and Sega and all them have never entered the market because there's a whole bunch of piracy, a whole bunch of like, you know, uh, clones for systems and games, right? So obviously there's like billions of people in China. So Nintendo wanted to, to market a system in China and they decide what, what can we do to help uh, fight the piracy issue? Okay. So what it is, it's a, it's a controller. It kind of looks like if you were to mix a Dreamcast controller with um, a Nintendo 64 controller and hybrid them together, that's what it looks like. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Very interesting device, and it plugs right into your TV. And you plug it into the wall, and it plugs right into the TV. And the, the car games themselves are cards that you plug into the controller, right? So it's it's kind of like a plug and play. And this controller is kind of similar to the Famicom disc drive back in the day, where you go to kiosk and, and load games into it. This is right. kind of how it worked. There are about fourteen games available for the system. Uh, for the IQ, and what it is, it's it's actually a, a Nintendo 64 in, condensed into a controller. So it came with like you have Mario 60, Super Mario 64 was built into it, and then you could also load like Wave Race 64, Star Fox 64, did Zelda, Mario Kart 64, Yoshi Story, Paper Mario, uh, Sin and Punishment, uh, Except by 64, Super Smash Brothers. So you guys get the idea, right? So some of the most popular Nintendo 64 games they can market to the Chinese population this way. Um, hmm. and, and to my knowledge, actually, still, uh, the IQ is, is still there around. I think they might have s stopped it. I'm not sure. There's, I don't know when they discontinued. I think it's still around. Uh, they also have an IQ uh, Game Boy player as well. So you can download games for the, the it was like a DS that they released, which is kind of cool. But it's kind of, a, it's a very unique system by Nintendo, only released in China. So the games are obviously all in Chinese. So I have, I have it, and you need an adapter to plug it into a North American wall, right? And the game that I was, like, I was playing, like Star Fox 64, it's all voiced in, in Chinese, with Mandarin, which is really cool. Uh, and wow. it's a really unique, unique system, kind of a very, it's a collector's item. Uh, you can go on eBay and they have them on eBay. You know, they're not they're super rare, but they're kind of obscure because not many people have heard about it. You know, uh, it's one of those rare Nintendo systems that are like, oh yeah, I've heard of every Nintendo system, but yeah, this one, right? So hmm. yeah. uh, that it's is officially licensed, right? Did you mention that? Sure? Officially licensed Nintendo product, yes. Huh. Uh, it has a really cool boot screen, so when you turn it on, it has a really unique boot screen. It says the IQ, uh, and I'm not quite sure what IQ means. To be honest with you, um, it means it means something. I don't I don't know what I mean, what, what exactly it means, but uh, it, it's something. Um, it's probably something short for something in Chinese. We'll have That's someone in the forums posting on it, I'm sure. Yes. Well, there's there on eBay right now. There's two uh, okay. ships from China. Uh, no bids. Eighty nine dollars free shipping in the okay. box. So, everything. So yeah, nothing. Yeah. You can also you can also have them load games, preload games when they then send it to you. That's the tricky thing. If you own one, uh, it's impossible to get games unless you live in China and they can do it for you, right? So if you get one, you know definitely have them. It comes with an. Uh, you know, Super Mario 64, right? But if you want, they also have games you can demo. So you can have like, 
I forget how many hours. I think maybe like two hours of demo for each game. So I was able to play Star Fox for a couple hours, and and the de- the demonstration runs out, and then you have to go and buy the game. So kind of a, kind of an interesting concept. Very right? cool system, yeah. Holy crap! Yeah. Well, this auction says every additional the game comes with a full version of Doctor Mario sixty four, right? And then four time limited versions of. Star Fox, Wave Race, Super Mario 64, and Zelda. And they say every additional game you want them to put on there is $16. Are they crazy? For downloading a game on there. That's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. They're out of their minds. Welcome to how many years ago? So it's it's kind of like, you know, this whole... I just posted a recent video with uh, the OnLive system. It's kind of similar to... The, I mean, it's like you don't really own the game. It's like all downloadable games. You just turn the cart, right? I mean, I guess it's a little bit different, but... Yeah, it's but interesting. Similar, similar, kind of similar concept. But this is 2003. This is seven, seven years ago, eight years ago. Yeah, and it's yes. interesting that they released uh, games for the Nintendo 64, not for the GameCube. You know, that's kind of interesting too. Yeah. So, I guess they figured it'd probably be easier to program games for, into a, a, a controller than it would be uh, a CD game. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, less space. Less space. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is the. The gaming piece theta today, guys. Thank you, Gamester81. Continue ask uh, conti- on the forums. If you guys have any requests to, to hear about a system or any game or history about that, post it on our forums, game, uh, Pete's Game Room forums, right? We also or do Algen, AlgenGamers.com. There's a link right to. Oh, yeah. AlgenGamers.com. There's a link. Uh, continue asking Love Talk questions. <clears throat> continue asking uh, general questions for all four of us to answer. We'd love to do that. Uh, audio questions, uh, you contact at allgengamers.com. You can email too. And p- please go on to iTunes and, and rate us. So we appreciate that. Right? Am I missing anything, guys? Have a happy and wonderful new year, you guys. It's the start of the, a new year. There's still yeah, one more thing. Before you start having a good new year, you should be making videos for our contest. Yes. Ah, thank you. Because by the time this comes out, this contest is only open until January 31st. And what it is, is uh, we would love it if you guys made a video of why you like the show and put it on the All Gen Gamers uh, Facebook page. Post or it why we should chat. send you Endless Ocean Sun by the I'm four. I'm about to get to it. Plus five. Totally. Yeah. Tell me what so, to do. yeah, the reason why, because what we're going to do is we're going to check out all these videos. And the one that we think is the best, and right now they're all the best. That's the problem with this. Uh, God, it's going to be very hard for us. But what we want to give to you guys. Uh, for you know, for the lucky winner is a copy of Endless o- Ocean Two, uh, donated by Pete, and Pete is going to sign it, and he's going to send it to myself. I'm going to sign it, and Rob Man is going to sign it, and then we're going to send it to Jason and Gamester, and they're going to sign it, and uh, and then we're going to send it to you um, for making a, a video. And uh, we appreciate everybody who's entered so far, and uh, we love all of them. I, I think every video is a winner. Right now, and I'm not just saying that, you know, how people say, you are all winners. But I really, all of them are so good. And uh, it's just, it really kind of, it pumps us up. This is the reason why we make the podcast, just to hear such nice responses of why you guys like the show. And this is a, a way of us being able to give back to you a little something. I wish we could give everybody something, but it doesn't can't, can't work out that way because it's a little tough. So uh, definitely, it's only up to, uh, to the 31st. So get your videos in. Don't put it on your individual uh, Facebook pages, but put it on our uh, All Gen Gamers Facebook page. So, yes, thank you. And, and the the whale has a page too, Facebook page as well. There's a yeah. link to that as well on our All Gen Gamers Facebook page. Yeah, so. is, that, is that All Gen Gamers Whale? Yeah. Yes, All Gen Gamers Whale. Go friend put that on Facebook. Yeah, go at him right now. He'll ooh, love it. Right and, now. Uh, Maybe we'll find out where he's at. I don't know. We don't. We think he's at Jason's, but J- Jason's been really weird about it. Jason's been really sketchy about it. He's like, I don't know. He's supposed to be in the pool, but he's not there. I don't know where he is. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It's, it's hard, hard to misplace a whale, Jason. Yeah. You keep kind of big. Yeah, I thought they were doing some texting, sect, sexting, I think they call it nowadays with the young kids. He's, he's pulling the Brett Favre move, huh? Doing some wexting. The wet yeah. sexting. <laughs> wet sting. Oh! <laughs> That is good. I Waxing. like that. I like that's, it. That's, that's <laughs> hot. So I like it. Maybe next time we'll find out what happened to the whale. So awesome stuff. So yeah, sorry, Jason, because Jason was saying Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, guys. Yeah. Another year of gaming, eh, guys? Like another year of intense video game action. Yes. And we Absolutely. get the 3DS this year, which we're all hyped about. We talked about. 
Oh, so many games coming out in January too. Still, <laughs> I still, I gotta finish what I got now. You know. Yeah, it's man, ridiculous. totally. It's been I a got rough, been a rough too. couple of months here, man. It'd be hard. How, how, how will we get through it? How are we gonna do this? Light the candles. Yeah. So. Hey, Johnny, I have an idea. Why don't we go on a 3ds together and we can share share it? Yeah, I, I like that. And I tell you what, what we'll do is um, I'll we'll mail it back and forth to each other. <laughs> and uh, what we'll do is I'll get the first go of it. How about I okay. buy all the games? And you buy all the games and send them to me. Okay. That's a good deal, isn't it? Sounds great. Fantastic deal. It's awesome. So I don't get it's the cool. games, I don't get the console. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'll sure as hell buy it all. Well, and, and games, too, the other thing is you got to wait all night for it. And as soon as you get it, you, you have to go to the mailbox and send it. Send it in. Yeah, yeah. open. I don't want it th- th- that same day, uh, you know, delivery. By FedEx, and then what so. you're going to do is you're going to go in a, you know, in a nice, you know, kennel lit room, you know, unwrap yeah. it. Turn it on, yep, and then have his moment. Then Rob Man's gonna come in. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show Rob Man to the other door. <laughs> good, hey, good to see you. Goodbye. Here's the door. <laughs> yes. I feel like this is a bad, bad guy from doing that, but no, I don't actually. So is this where we say our goodbyes to everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Well, and we're the waiting. Awkward part of the show. Right now. Goodbye. This is always the most awkward part of the show because no you know what? No, you're we making it awkward. We don't want to say goodbye. We, yeah, we never so let's say hello until next time well, that's your move though that's your, your saying don't tell me what to do don't tell him what to do don't take my sayings don't tell him what to do <laughs> tell me what to do okay anyways right. guys just see you guys, see you guys. Yeah. oh it's Pete here goodbye guys I'm so so sick <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye goodbye Pete goodbye. I'm serious about that Vicks vape rub what you want to do you want to if you don't want to put it on your chest you just get a little like a hey rag. this is getting x-rated now what you want to do is get a little rag Put a little Vicks vapor rub on there, and then tonight when you let, when you go lay down, lay on your back, it, and then yeah, put it right under your your chin there, so that the, the vapor rub can go into your nose, and it will clear out your nasal. Yeah, it's, 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 money, it's, it's money. It's very nice, and I think you'll like it a lot. And I want you to comprehend that you heard me. Yes. All right. Yeah. Now comprehend it's that you're going to do that. I'm listening. If I can find Vicks vapor rub. Okay. Now there's Walgreens. They're open 24 hours. Oh. my this is the podcast that won't end. Goodbye, everybody. And you know I'm what? Done. There's also Walmart. Hey. Okay. Anyways, right. guys, it's you guys. See you guys. Yeah.